I saw scary stories to tell in the dark and I was pleasantly surprised. The first part of this review is going to be spoiler free just in case you want to go see this movie. The second part will actually be a podcast that I did with a moderator on this channel, which is normally only available to people that support me on Patreon, but I wanted to share this one with you guys. But if you want more exclusive podcasts and videos that I only post on my Patreon, I have a link in the comment section and video description down below. Also a warning, the podcast portion has massive spoilers, so you'll know when it begins, I'll let you know. So just in case you don't want spoilers. So many of you, me included, may remember reading stories from Scary Stories to Tell Yourself in the Dark and the sequels to that and just freaking the hell out of yourself and giving yourself lots of nightmare fuel. And then you may or may not have felt some excitement when it was announced that they were going to base a movie off of those stories and those books. Or maybe you're a little afraid like me because sometimes they take things from your childhood and just horribly mangle them for money. If you haven't watched the movie yet, know that it's not a direct adaptation of the stories within these books and put on the big screen, which for me is a good thing. I'm glad they took the stories and monsters or creatures from them or the general premise and made it their own. Although it might have been really cool to see those exact stories put on the big screen. Then again, part of what was spooky about those stories was your imagination. Basically, the stories were a little bit more creepier because of your imagination and what you didn't see or know. The director said that he didn't want to do an anthology series because he feels like the movie would only be as good as the weakest story. So instead, he made the premise that a young girl is tortured by her family or mistreated and she knows some deep secrets and she writes scary stories in a book to kind of vent and deal with her situation. And when she dies many years later, a group of teenagers find her book and then the ghost Sarah Bellows, who is upset about them taking the book, starts writing new stories in it and making those stories come to life. And honestly, I was absolutely amazed how well they did this. They definitely did a great job of weaving elements from the books and, and the stories into this movie. And yeah, you'd have the, the general monster like Harold the Scarecrow, but the scenario was a little bit different and his victim was different. But at its core, it was still the fucking freaky Harold. Oh my God. It was also cool because they took certain titles for stories and included them as a title in the story of the movie, but the actual contents of the story were different than in the book. So they did a good job balancing that, I think. I think there's only one creature that really bothered me a lot, but it's a spoiler and I talk about it in the podcast portion. So if you've already seen the movie or you don't care about spoilers, you can listen to the, the second portion of this video and I kind of rant a little bit about it. Although I feel like it leaves open for a sequel. So if you enjoy scary movies or maybe you read these books at one point in your life, I would really recommend watching this movie. Is it the best movie ever? Is it the best horror movie ever? Certainly not. But I think it successfully achieves what it was trying to do. So I'd give it a solid 6.5 out of 10 T-Rexes. I wish they would have included more stories from the books, but what they included was great. Now the podcast portion. This portion is definitely filled full of spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, please click away now. And again, if you want more exclusive videos and podcasts, check out my Patreon that is linked down below. Hi, Big Spoon. Hi, Rorist. How are you today? I'm fantastic. How much yourself? I haven't had enough caffeine. I need more. I haven't had enough booze. I need more. Go get some tequila. I'll wait. <laughs> I don't drink your peasant shit. Go on. It'll work better that way. Well, it'll work better that way. You're drinking tequila. So what do you think about scary stories to tell in the dark? Scary stories to tell in the dark. I thought it was a really well done movie. Um, there are parts of it that at first I thought were a little rushed and then it, then it like, you know, came together and was like, no, that, I guess that works. And 
don't know. I thought it was I was really good, and it had the right amount of scary and the right amount of um. What's the word I'm looking for? Right amount of scary. Had the right amount of scary and the right amount of make you use your own imagination. So, I don't know. I, I would give it a 6 out of 10. It was definitely very entertaining. Or, I'm sorry, we used dinosaurs here. I yeah. give it 6 dinosaurs out of 10. Because I like the freak out people have on me. That's so stupid. Why do you use dinosaurs? Because it fucking triggers you. And because you're goddamn roarist. Yeah, I ride a fucking T-Rex. <laughs> you do what you fucking want. Although people used to ask whether... I was named Roars, or the T-Rex was named Roars. And then afterwards, I was like, damn it, I wish I would have named the T-Rex Roars. Oh, sucks to suck. It does every single day. I, what I kind of liked about it is, it had a good mixture of people dying and and making it, where it's the same way in the books, the scary stories to tell in the dark. There are some stories where a shit ton of people die, or people die, and then there are stories where people actually make it out of it or it just ends abruptly. Like the red spot one, the girl gets bit by a spider, her mom keeps checking it, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. And before she can go see the doctor, she takes a warm hot bath and then while she's in the bath, her cheek explodes and the spiders go everywhere and like it ends there. Where in the movie, we got to see that she ended up being, I guess, pseudo okay. <laughs> well, yeah, she ended up I guess when, fuck, what's her name? Sarah, right? No, Sarah was the the ghost. Yeah, so when Sarah oh. finally Released moved the on, spell. I guess she went back to being, being sane. Yeah, so, what was the main character's name again? There's Stella. Also, yeah, I was saying it also started with an S. Yeah, so I really liked that it had a common, I, I've noticed lately in horror movies, there's a very... Everybody just dies. Like, it's it's so in for it to be a depressing ending where everything's awful and people just die and that's it. Where I feel like in this movie, people died and you didn't feel like anyone was safe, but then there were people that actually made it. So that was something I actually really liked about it. The fact that it just wasn't, everybody dies, everyone's doomed. And I don't know if this is just a personality flaw in myself. I have thought this since I was a teenager watching horror movies. I'm like, why do you, Why don't you just fucking give up and die? Mm. Like, when there's a killer after you and he's killed five of your friends and no matter what you do, he just keeps going, I'd be like, dude, I'm gonna take some fucking pills and just kill myself. Take this bitch, you can't get me, I get myself. It's like you can't fire me, I quit. You can't kill me. <laughs> you can't kill me, I quit on life. I kill myself. Oh, man. So, I don't know, I've always thought that. But, like, in this movie, I actually felt as if there was a chance at survival, so I would be more likely to not just GTFO. Maybe I really, you know, my mom used to tell me she thinks, uh, she thought I was a quitter. Maybe I am a quitter. Now that I think about it. <laughs> ah, you know, serial killers after me are murderers after me. Fuck this, I give up. Oops. I will say one of the things that I thought was really well done with the movie, and a lot of people may disagree with me on this, but there's something about that scary movie and like the, the person is walking through the house and then there's the big scary looming music and it, it just kills it for me. And I'm like, okay, yep, clearly this is where something's going to jump out on her. Like, the things that scare me is when it's, like, kind of dead silent and then bad stuff happens. And this movie, I noticed a lot of the scenes, like, when something really wrong was going on, it was quiet. Like, especially with uh, the Harold scene, the, the scarecrow. He was, uh, when the scarecrow was coming around, all you could kind of hear was the wind with the corn. Oh, and the his corn breathing, Tommy's and breathing. And his breathing, yeah. And that stuff's horrifying to me because, you know, when you just, when all you hear is um, this, like, big booming music leading up to the scary moment, you're like, yep, yeah, okay, there's about to be a monster that's going to jump out of nowhere. But when it's just suddenly like, bah! it's like, holy shit. So I really like that about the movie. Yeah, it, it did have some jump scares to it. Not as lazy and bad as they usually do. Oh, speaking of bad, this is the one thing that really bothered me, and it was from the trailer or teaser they had for this movie. That stupid fucking line, but it was better in the movie, where she goes, You don't read the book! The book reads you! That has been such an over-said line 
like over and over again in horror movies and it worked because literally the book was reading them and then taking things they feared and turning it against them but at the same time ugh, really that's perfect what are you talking about in soviet russia book reads you no. No, <laughs> so overdone uh which i guess monster was your favorite define favorite so which one did okay let's start with this which one do you think was the scariest so you have the pale woman who was the big blobby fat oh i remember them oh unless you want to i was just letting you okay okay so you have harold who is the scarecrow right (laughs) then he either wore the kid's jacket after killing him or he's a new scarecrow uh you have the big toe with the woman that was missing her toe and then came in after um one of the characters you have the red spot with the spiders coming out you have the pale woman with you know she's a super blob and the black hair black eyes um i always feel like you say it it's the it's the jangly man in the movie but it's based off the toe tie doti i don't know tie um we'll have to look that one up me do me tied to whatever it's the jangly man in the movie and then we had what are we missing the sarah story oh the haunted house yeah the haunted house so it wasn't really a monster but it was pretty pretty good out there you know what's interesting about that there is a story called the haunted house in the scary uh tales to tell but it doesn't match up with that at all so they used the title from a story they just completely changed it around so i'm sorry out of all those which one did you find the scariest i would say the most horrifying was the uh, the blob woman i mean the idea of being in a long hallway and no matter which way i go like there's just this like creepy woman blob woman like slowly walking at me with a smile on her face and no matter which way i turn there's no way of escaping her that must have been horrifying i mean that's like that's like being in a in a hallway with your back up against a wall so you're like at a dead end of a hallway and just seeing something that is clearly coming to kill you slowly walk at you for like a minute or two minutes straight until it finally gets up to you and kills you that's freaking horrifying i mean there's no way to escape and it's just coming and there's nothing you can do yeah i don't know why i kind of find the spiders coming out of her cheek to be one of the freakiest just because there are creatures that can lay eggs in your skin yeah. and stuff like that, so... That one was my number two, because it is reality. But at the end of the day, it didn't kill her. So, you know, that was... It was like, yeah, that sucks. But if I got a big giant spot like she did on my face, I was headed straight to the doctor. Because that, that wasn't right. Yeah. But yeah, I would say that was my number two scariest. The big toe one, I didn't like because... The other ones, while they did bend reality a little bit, he got dragged under the bed into what looked like an alternate reality. Yeah. So that one, I don't know. I well, didn't I like didn't, that one as much. I didn't like that one at all, because he went out like a fucking bitch. I mean, like, oh no, monster's coming. I'm going to go hide under the bed. What did he think was going to happen? Yeah. I mean, Has like... Has he not seen any horror movies? Yeah, you I mean... never go under well, the bed. Well, given that it, this took place in the 1960s, so he may have not seen a horror movie. Yeah. 1960s no. in the middle of BF nowhere. They they might have not even had a theater they out were... there. Are you kidding me? They were in a drive-in theater uh, watching a scary movie. Gosh. And they were the Stella loves scary movies. All right, I, I take that back. I feel like a tard. Uh, but yeah, so he's probably seen a few scary movies. But even then, still, it's just, I don't know. I would have been, like, the first thing I would have been like is, okay, someone just said, where's my toe? And... Give it to her. No, I wouldn't even give it to her. I'd, I'd go find a baseball bat. I mean, that's the thing that I love about, like, you you see these things where, like, people dress up as monsters and scare other people, and, like, every third person will just blast the person that's dressed up in the face. Like, pop! Right in the face. Those have been my favorite. What? Those have been my favorite. Yeah, because that's how most, or a lot of people would probably respond. You either have the people that run and, like, scream and run away, and then you also have the people that are like, oh my gosh, there's something coming at me, must kill. I mean, everyone knows that the uh, the person that goes running down the hallway is going to die. So, at least, at least rather rather have a fighting chance and not go out like a bitch. But, you know. You know, that also reminded me 
um, you probably have seen this before, the zombie walks where, like, a bunch of college students dress up as zombies and they walk downtown or whatever in different cities. I actually have never, I've heard about them, but I've never actually seen one. I always worry there's going to be some asshole that freaks out and thinks they're real zombies and is has a gun and just blows their brains out. I don't know. I wouldn't take that risk of dressing up like a zombie and randomly sh uh, shambling around. Yeah, that would be a little awkward, wouldn't it? Yeah, if my, bl my brains got blown out, yeah, that would be a little bit awkward. A little awkward. So um, going back to uh, the various stories, I feel like the uh, the jangly man wasn't really that horrifying. I know he ran fast, and did you know he was played by a real contortionist? Which is why he did such weird movements. Yeah. That's neat. So like 90% of it was practical effects and then 10% was digital. Um, so that guy was really doing... I didn't really find him that scary either. Well, there was some severe, like discrepancies in how he moved because at the beginning um you see him like slowly shamble into the the jail room after he kills the the cop and then after that so ramon he uh where was i going with this oh right okay so yeah um y you saw a lot of discrepancies in this character because first he slowly shambles after killing the sheriff into the the jail cell which gives them ample time to to open the the jail and then go running away then they quickly get in the car or i guess uh ramon gets in the car and as ramon is driving this car away at i mean Police cars have some pretty good pickup because they want to make sure that they can chase down other cars. So you imagine he, this kid probably floored it and went as fast as he could and the shambling man outran him. And then as he pins it up against a truck and then gets out and starts running to the, the haunted house, somehow he makes it to the haunted house before the shambling man can catch up to them despite the fact that the shambling man outran a car. And, and then, he got out of it really quickly, too, when he was crushed between the yeah. two vehicles. I was like, you didn't lose that much time, dude. Exactly. And then, like, he's going through the house, and the, he's just, like, outrunning him from room to room through the house. And it's, it was like, there, there's something off in this thing's movement. He's not actually trying to kill him. He's just trying to scare him. So, I mean, that one kind of bugged me. What a little bitch. I know, right? Um... I think Harold the Scarecrow was really well done. I thought that was one of my favorite stories. Because there was a build-up to it right from the beginning. Like, yeah. he was, you know, hitting the the Scarecrow, like, what, probably not even five minutes into the start of the film? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a sort of thing where Sarah was taking it out on the bad people of the town. But then she just went from Tommy to all the other kids. Where no, it was, like, was it was everyone who was in the house, which makes sense. Yeah, but I was like, man, it would have been cooler if she just went after people that were just bad people like her family. Yeah. But uh, Harold and the Pale Woman, they did an amazing job. Because you said you never read the scary stories to tell in the dark. Any no, I had never read the books. So they had these terrifying images with them. And sometimes the the pictures were worse than the story. And the, the pale woman and the Harold, they did an amazing job bringing to life. Just terrifying. Yeah, I mean, Harold, that... <laughs> If I, if I lived on a farm, I would probably beat the crap out of that scarecrow, too. That thing was terrifying. I would. Actually, reading Harold, that story, and abusing an inanimate thing, I think also what gave me my thing now where I treat inanimate objects with respect. Like, if I ever had a doll or, like my bb-8 stuff thing like i'm always very nice and i'm like okay you go here and i know they're not real but i have this fear i'm like okay if they come back and kill me it's because they're the asshole not me it's not on me i was nice to them says rorus destroyer of technology and all things well i didn't say anything about the uprising of artificial intelligence yeah I you're screwed sure the day that happens them. They have a long list of murder victims for me and you're on the top of it probably you're on the top of their list probably oh 
Oh no! <laughs> I swear, you go through so much technology. I know. Anyway, um, so yeah, I think the only one we haven't mentioned is the uh, um, the last one was Stella, the uh, the haunted house. I thought that was actually kind of cool. I really liked it too. I kind of don't understand why Sarah did that to her. Was so Sarah's pissed that she took the book and Sarah is just angry in general. Why would she make someone else live through what she lived through to then try to kill her in the end? Um, probably cuz she thought that that was a scary story because it happened to her and it it screwed her up, so she was like, "All right, if you're so obsessed with me, let me show you uh, what I had to go through and why you shouldn't be. I don't think she was trying to show her the way she shouldn't be. She was just being... Like, the girl said telling the truth. Um, Ramon says, tell Sarah the truth. And I really like that. That was actually one of my favorite messages of the movie. What they did to you is terrible. What you do now is on you. Because I have dated people that had really tragic pasts, and one person in particular that it really disgusts me, he used the death of a sibling to explain why he was a piece of shit to people. Well, I do this because when I was a little kid, my sibling died, and now I just, I can't open up to anyone, and, you know, I just, I do these mean things, and it's just the way to deal with being that hurt little boy. And I'm like, you know, if there's an afterlife, which I severely doubt, but there is, your sibling is looking down and being like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Like, that is so terrible to me. Just the awful things this person would do to other people and then justify it by, well, this happened to me, so this is why I'm the way. And I always enjoyed those things of you take two people who had a similar tragedy happen to them and then see where they end up. And some people just choose, well, I'm the victim and I'm just always gonna be a douchebag and fuck you and be bitter. And then there's other people that rise above it and go, I don't ever want another human being to feel the way I did, so I'm not going to be this way. So when she said to Sarah, like, yeah, that's fucked up, they abused you. They did terrible things to you, but what you're now doing to other people because of it is fucking on you, and you need to decide, are you gonna- And that's why they say the cycle of violence and abuse happens in families, because your parents abuse and fuck you up, and then you abuse and fuck up your children, and then they abuse and fuck up their children, and it's just- It's really hard to break those cycles of- abuse yeah but i mean on the same token you also see families where like you get an alcoholic parent and then one of the children is an alcoholic and the other one won't touch alcohol okay. so i mean okay but here, oh, so here's a good example for that my mother was a psycho abusive cunt and she abused me now you look at me i am very careful about not abusing people and I care way too much about others and I have way too much empathy and children crying or screaming or being beat just fucks me up so bad. My sister on the other hand is an abusive cunt to her children and acts just the way our mother did now to her children. So you can see it very clearly with two siblings. One went the other way and said, this is so fucked up, I'm never gonna do this to a child, I'm never gonna do this to another human being, is overly sure that I'm not hurting other people. And then the other sibling's like, fuck this, this is what I grew up with, ha ha ha, I'm being a total piece of shit and that's okay. I mean, I would argue that they probably don't even see it as a bad thing, they just seem to see it as normal. Which, you know, isn't good and isn't really justifying it, but... Actually, that's a really sad thing because they... A lot of people... This is why I really like things like Reddit, even though I think it's a fucking piece of shit and online things. It opens the world up. You don't know how many people that grew up with something, but because it was their norm, they thought it was normal. And then they grew up and talking to other people went, holy shit, this wasn't normal. What happened in my childhood or what my parents did was not normal. And they don't know that because that's their world. So you're right. I don't know how I figured out Maybe because I got the brunt of the abuse, I was like, I'm never making another human being feel like this. Where 
probably my sister doesn't even recognize anything wrong with it. Yeah. You never I don't know. know. It's fucking, but I really like how she called her out in the end. I don't know. That was my favorite moment. Also, how they ended it where Stella said, I don't know how, but I think we can get them back. And then she was in the car with her dad. And then the red spot girl who ended up surviving. Do you think they're going to have a sequel to this? I think they opened it up for Rude, sequels. Yeah, I was going to say, I think they open it up for sequel. Like any movie you watch where it looks like it could have the possibility to be a big movie. They always open it up for a sequel. They, like, leave that little bit of extra because they know what Hollywood's going to do. If Hollywood likes it enough, they're going to be like, hey, let's make another movie out of it. Not like, let's be honest, if it makes enough money. Like, yeah, okay. If Hollywood likes it enough means if Hollywood thinks that they can make enough money off of it. It it means nothing to do whether or not it's a good movie. So. I also, even if they don't make a sequel, though, it is cool because it's giving us hope okay, maybe she can rescue her friends who died that didn't need to die. Like, they they didn't deserve it. So, even if we don't give a sequel, it leaves open that hopefulness that, okay, maybe they are going to come back and be able to grow up. Now, um, for sequel prospects, which I feel like would be hard because Sarah's gone, so she's not going to be telling stories anymore, unless somehow Stella now has the power. But going back to it, for uh, sequel prospects, were there other stories that they could do? There are tons of other stories. Okay. But you want to know what I just thought about? Remember how the the big toe, who has my toe, and then she uh, she drags Drags him into the other world. What if she has to find a way to open up into that world and find them. Although, is that like a rip-off of Stranger Things, the Upside Down? I mean, it almost feels more like a rip-off of, like, Pan's Labyrinth or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably Stranger Things. Because but... maybe she does. She has to go into that other world and... But realistically, like, most things are a rip-off of something. Yeah, that's so true. So it's like, it's not really... There's not a lot that's, like, 100% original. I mean, you... you listen to music today and you can go and straight up ask the artists like hey what's your inspiration and they'll name like 10 other people of their genre that they used to listen to when they were a kid like so everything is inspired by something true and they're until like there's a new technology i mean until there's a new technology come out i I think it would be really hard to say like oh yeah this is brand new i mean think about all the movies they're making nowadays that are like a remake of a movie that was made years ago. I mean, there have been remakes of remakes of remakes now. Too many remakes. No, some of them are much better done. I mean, I'm Name not one. I'm not knocking it at all, but I really liked liked the newer it. I mean, all right, you got me I there. thought they did great with that. You got me there. Yeah, Name I got a you. second remake. A second <laughs> was remake. Good. Yeah, I got you on this one. No. Motherfucker. Okay. Um Roars does not win. <laughs> Screw you, hippie. You, well, you put me on the spot. I gave you an answer right away, and now you're like, oh, I need another answer. Welcome welcome to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong. Evidence. That's not good enough. Prove me wrong again. Okay. We'll call this one a tie, but when I come up with the movie later, I'm going to smack you in the face with it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Violence. So did you feel like Ramon was going to be the bad guy in the beginning? I didn't think he was going to be the bad guy. I was just, I was a little confused because I was like, what is he, a gypsy or something? Gypsies gypsies don't exist in the U.S. I mean, they probably did, but, you know. You know how bad I am at racially profiling people? So, I didn't really know culturally, ethnic what he was until he was called wetback and i was like oh he's mexican okay (laughs) like i just i'm so bad at identifying where people come from that i just i didn't know until that happened and i felt like such an asshole i'm like i get in trouble for this all the fucking time i'm like i don't know yeah well i mean i i can kind of see it from that point because at that point in time like the world was a lot like bigger of a place you couldn't just 
talk to everybody in the world over the internet because it didn't exist. I mean, they were using... I think they were still using rotary telephones, weren't they? In the... mm-hmm. So, like... They were the... using rotary telephones when I was a girl! What are you saying? I mean, we all know that you're, what, 56 now? 54, you piece of shit. Oops, I'm sorry. Never talk about a woman's age, folks. That's all I got to say about that. Um, anyway, so... They were in a, a podunk farming community in the middle of uh, Pennsylvania. So, I mean, there was a good chance that racially it was like 99.5% white. I mean, so somebody of any other color whatsoever showing up was probably a big red flag. And that's why the sheriff got all up on his ass. And Well, I'm not saying that he was going to be the bad guy because of his ethnicity oh my god that's not where i was going with that oh okay I good i thought that. you were just a terrible person no well, you are no, a terrible person no but. i was saying because like he had these shifty eyes and he was a douche to the other two guys but with her he seemed really into scary violent shit and so i was thinking oh he's a warlock or something or he's the one that makes the stuff come true or he wants her to get the book to write in it because he wants scary shit like i thought that's the direction they were going in jesus christ you just made me out to be a racist i mean isn't that our culture today everybody's a racist (laughs) no yeah so i i didn't i didn't get that vibe at all from him i like he they, they all jumped in his car and i mean before we even saw his character i was like Wow, Stella's kind of a cute girl, despite the fact that, like, you know, she doesn't apparently try at all. And, I mean, both of her friends kind of recognized her as attractive, but at the same token were like, nope, she's our friend, so they didn't go after her, even though they, you know, they made a few comments here and there. Yeah. Um. So when they all jumped in the car, I was, I was just kind of imagining it from, uh, if I was in his perspective. This attractive girl just jumped in my passenger seat. Yeah, I'm going to start hitting on her. And then her two douchebag friends in the back are, like, being complete assholes. Yeah, I'm going to be like, fuck you guys. Get out of my car. I don't know. He just seemed a little bit sinister in the beginning. I mean, that's because he first appeared in, like, in, like, a movie theater scary film. He's like, oh, yeah, come into my car. I'll, well, you I'll know, he you. first appeared coming into town and the sheriff was like, where oh, are yeah, you going? He He's like, following the harvest. Yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense. He he was the drifter right off the bat. Yeah, but... and the drifter and the outsider is usually the killer. Not always. I mean, that's so cliche. You're cliche. Your face is cliche. Oh! Yeah, take that. Come at me. I'll come right back. <laughs> anyway, I said I was giving this uh, six out of ten T-Rexes. What were you giving Six to six and a half T-Rexes out of ten. I enjoyed it. I knew I was going to enjoy it because I love the stories. But I didn't realize I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. So kudos to them for managing not to... What's the whiny thing us children, adult children say? You ruined my childhood! (laughs) When someone remakes or makes something based off of something you loved as a child so i really liked it you really liked it yeah i would even bump it up to six and a half i thought it was very entertaining and i would definitely watch it again so six and a quarter for me you just said six and a half bye (laughs) loser